Today on Power Women of Queens, Lucia Dragos meets Sister S. Dorba, a peacemaker and activist. She is the founder and executive director of Life Network. Make sure that the women were safe, that they had a safe place that they could be, and also to bring this to the knowledge of the general public. QPTV presents Power Women of Queens, a series that highlights the everyday female decision maker, political leader, manager, and scientist as the norm, not the exception. The women featured are everyday women, mothers, wives, sisters, and co-workers whose actions have contributed to the Queen's community. Sister Joan's contribution to the abolitionist movement have been lauded by numerous organizations, including St. John's University, who awarded her their Caritas Medal in 2014. Pax Christi, New York, who presented her with the Sisters Christine Mulready Peacemaker Award in 2015, and the New York's New Abolitionist, who named her as one of their own in 2014. A member of the Sister of Charity Halifax, Sister Joan is a former co-chair of the New York Coalition of Religious Congregations to Stop Human Trafficking serves on the Sister of Charity Global Concerns resource team and is a board member of the U.S. Catholic Sisters Against Human Trafficking. I know you started the organization 10 years ago. Is that when you got involved in um, fighting human trafficking and how that all happened? Yeah, no, 10 years ago was the beginning of Lifeway Network, but I started to be involved in human trafficking in 2001. And that really began with the women religious in all over the world coming together at a meeting in 2001 and looking at the issue of human trafficking, particularly the issue of women and children, and then deciding that it was really important that they spread the word throughout their congregations, throughout the countries where they are, and to get that word out to, uh, to as many of us as possible. So at that point in time, we were invited to learn about human trafficking and to um, actually to, to pray about it and to see what we actually could do as women religious individually. So I, I thought about it and I said, oh my God, this is awful. I really don't want to have anything to do with it. It was quite scary and quite dreadful. And so I decided I would just, um, as a sister, pray about it. And when I began to pray about it, then I began to, I believe, get the courage to do something else about it. And uh, we came together, five of us did, to start something. And that's, that's how we began, by building a coalition of religious women here in the New York area. And that is wonderful. From there. Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. I just want to go back a little bit. You said that it, you felt it's a dreadful issue and something heavy. Um, how do you deal on a day-to-day basis? Because I'm sure it, it is still, that's how you feel still, but how do you deal on a day-to-day basis to let that go and then focus on the... Uh, other things. Yeah. Well, um, I would say to you, as a woman religious, um, I have a daily practice and I pray every single day. Um, it's like breathing for me. I need to do that. Um, not because I'm told to do it, but because I have a relationship with God and I want to do that. And that's where I bring most of the um, suffering of the people I serve and what I see, um, and I bring that there. Uh, so that gives me the, I am always accompanied. I feel that I'm not alone in this. And, uh, and then when you get wonderful staff that join you in this whole thing, you definitely know you're not alone. and You work with it together. We started with five. Now it's 10 years down the road. How many people do you have? And what exactly, in what exact ways do you serve uh, the victims of human trafficking. Mm. 
So when I said five, that was five women who worked with, we worked together on building a coalition. Throughout the work of the coalition, then we decided we needed a safe house. And I felt, I felt we needed a safe house. So I got um, permission from my congregation to leave the work I was in and to start this work of a safe house. So in 2007, I actually founded Lifeway Network. Um, so our work there was to f provide safe housing. This is the work we wanted to do, to make sure that the women were safe, that they had a safe place that they could be, and also to bring this to the knowledge of the general public. I mean, it, it was so unknown, it was so hidden in plain sight that um, unless we were to actually educate the general public about it and get them on board with us to kind of work, work, work on this. Do you see the difference from 10 years to now oh. uh, as far as the general public goes? Yes, hugely. I mean, 10 years ago people knew nothing about it. Um, now, television programs are about it, so thank you. Yes. Um, and, and other, you know, like Law and Order and all of those other programs um, have the streams of human trafficking running through their storyline, which I think helps to educate the public about it, but it also then, we need to be able to get the public involved in and do something about it. We fight that issue in international, I mean global and national level, but the community of Queens, what, what are some ways that they can be involved and how we can prevent that from happening in our community? Yeah, I think the major thing and, and most important thing is that individuals decide that they want to be involved, but they really need to be educated about the issue of human trafficking. So I think the, fir the first thing is to actually know about it, be educated about um, about it, in, invite us to come and educate your groups so that we can work with you in this and you can work with us in it. Um, I think that's a major, a major part of it. Um, when we first started this, um, I was on my own, there was nobody else, just myself, and I would go out and do education at the very, very beginning. People needed to understand so what can they do here? You know, Queens is the most diverse um, borough, mm -hmm. yes, in, in the whole of, of, of the United States. And when I first got involved in this, it was an article that was written by, in the New York Times by one of the journalists there who does, uh, you know, investigative journalism. Nicola Christoph? No, it, it actually wasn't Christoph. It was Peter Landersman, as okay. it had happened. And that was in 2004. And he wrote an article about girls coming out of Mexico. It was a very hard article to read at that time for me. Um, the girls were put to work in ditches and timed, and it, it was disgusting. But the girls not only were being, pros um, being prostituted in, in Mexico, but they were coming to the United States and they were ending up in Queens. Oh. Not oh. far from where I live. And so that was one of the major things that I said, it's here, it's in my neighborhood. I have to do something about it. That, that reminds me, in 2006, I wrote and directed a feature on human trafficking. And there was an article that I read that inspired me. And the second article that I read was about Queens. They found a house that there were a lot of women that were human trafficked. And I didn't realize that that was happening in America because people do not speak about it. No. And it was very common where I come from, mm -hmm. Bulgaria and especially Eastern Europe. Yes. Um, so uh, that inspired me to create yes. the movie. But when, where I come from and in Eastern Europe generally, there's still a stigma attached to that issue. Do you think there is a stigma also in America? In some cases, there is an openness to sex work, what is understood as sex work. Um, for me, sex work, it's not, a, it's not a, a career for a woman. It's not a choice between other options. It, it just becomes a little difficult. But 
anybody who has suffered from being trafficked. I mean, yeah, there is a stigma attached to it. Of course, there, there, is, there is, in many cases, you feel, well, if you've chosen it for yourself, then I, 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 that's, a, that's right. another story right. altogether. But in most cases, it's been forced upon the women that right. we serve, and that's the trafficking situation. And yeah, there's a stigma because this is not what they intended, this is not what they wanted, this is not how they intended their lives to go. Moving forward with their lives, do you think many of them are reluctant to come out and share their story? Um, or they're openly coming out and sharing their story and want to help it's, other victims? Yeah, it depends. It depends. It depends on what they've suffered, how they have suffered, where they came from, who their parents are, who their family is. Um, it, some will absolutely want to share their story and want to and say publicly, I don't want this to happen to anybody else. This is why I'm sharing my story. Um, but it can be very difficult at the beginning yeah. for them to share their story. It's re-traumatizing them and putting them through that again until they've come to a point in their own recovery where they can know that they are yeah. wonderful people who they are. This is part of their story. They've integrated it into their lives and they're moving forward. What would you say is the biggest need? I know safe housing and that you provide its absolute necessity. What is another need that they really have, number one? I would say for the women in the houses, the number one need is for them to be able to have sufficient education to get a good paying job. It's the good paying job that then will be able to move them forward so that they can get a, uh, somewhere to live that they can pay for, they can have a normal, regular life. Are there organizations in Queens that provide that? Um, I would say in Queens, um, there is one organization that is working in, in different areas, but yes, in Queens, um, Restore. Um, USA is um, working with empowerment for young women who have been through the trafficking situation and it really gives them an, an opportunity then to be able to get a job and, and to move forward. They just started it recently so kudos, kudos. Oh, that's great. <laughs> To, yes, to restore. the more the better. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And and economic so empowerment is cr critical. Yes. yes. Uh, do you think we do enough to help the victims of human trafficking? Well, let me put it this way. In New York, there are just two agencies that work directly um, providing housing specifically for victims of human trafficking. I just mentioned the other one, and then Lifeway Network. So um, there are other agencies who do an awful lot of work with survivors and provide some kind of shelter for them, but it's not specifically designated for survivors of human trafficking. I know you've done a lot for the victims of human trafficking, and there are a lot of success stories, for lack of a better word, but what is the proudest moment that you had throughout your career working with human trafficking victims? One proudest moment. Oh my gosh, I can't say one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, perhaps, and it's not from 2000, and not from now, it was from the very beginning, when our first woman walked through the door of the safe house. Mm. And she just stood there, and her eyes just popped right out of her head, and she said, it's a home. It's a real home. I just, that was for me so wonderful. That was just so wonderful. And I had said prior to starting this work, if one person, we can get one person, I would be happy. <laughs> And she said, it's a home. And she just stood against the wall and actually slid down the wall and sat on the floor. <laughs> she That's was amazed, just amazed. That reminds me of 
when you said one person when I did my movie and they asked me why I said you know if one person one woman from Eastern Europe or anywhere in the world watches it and decides not to go for that newspaper ad that advertises yes, job and yes. then my job is done my yeah. my job is not done but it, it justifies all the effort that we've yes. been through the movie yes. so it reminds me it's really powerful yes. seeing to influence people's lives yes how many women would you say throughout these 10 years been in the house and um out successfully in the world well i have to say there are almost 70 have gone so 69 i think women have gone through the house mm. at this time and honestly i don't know any that has returned to the trafficker or done any of that right. so um well, <laughs> yes. I, I think something worked right <laughs> do you have any regrets throughout your career in this work of human trafficking? Yes. No, I would not say regrets at all. Um, I would want to be able to help them to know more who they are, the beauty of each, of, of the individual, that they are precious and wonderful. Um, and you can't get them to believe that until they believe that. I'm sure throughout your work, because it's, it's a very uh, sensitive topic and it's a difficult issue, I'm sure you were not always getting from first time everything that you wanted. Were there any failures that taught you a lesson? I think, you know, it, it's not a failure at all, but we have learned in our safe houses um, and in different ways. The women have taught us the women have taught us different things that we would at the very beginning be a little serious and you know very strict and particularly uh, around being on time for this or doing that or doing the other and we've learned as we've moved along you know mm, that's nonsense <laughs> the women are we 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 have parameters we do things very carefully so that they are very very safe and that's the first and most important thing. Um, but they've taught us a lot. Uh, we've learned from them, yeah. So you would say this work changed you? Yes, yes. it does. It does. You can't do it. In it. And you can't do it if you're not willing to be open to be changed. Um, one of the things that we say when we look at community, and that's part of what, Lifeway Network is about, really is about bringing people together to be with one another and journey with one another. Um, if you build community f to help others, it's never going to work. You build How community so? so that it's a give and take, so that you are learning from and the other person is learning from because we're all uh, we're all flawed we learn from one another yeah. and we're we grow in that way yeah yeah would you say that's your mission in life oh my mission in life no i wouldn't say so but i would say that it is to bring people together yeah <laughs>